Welcome to Statistics for Surveys, Session 2, Descriptive Statistics Tables, Segment 1, Nominal Variable, where we will discuss absolute and relative frequencies. The objective of this segment is to understand how to calculate and interpret different types of frequencies that can already be employed for variables that have a nominal measurement level. This means that they can actually also be used for any other measurement level ordinal interval or ratio. If you're not familiar with the terms variable, score and coding uh, of variables, you might want to have a look at uh, session one episode or segment two. If you're not familiar with the terms measurement level and nominal, you might want to have a look at session one, segment three. The terms that will be discussed in this segment are absolute frequency, relative frequency, percent and valid relative frequency. If we have a nominal variable, or actually any variable, then one of the first things we're interested in is that ancient question, how many? So for example, with educational program, which was coded as one being business, two IT, three mathematics, four psychology, then the first thing we might want to know is, okay, based on these scores, how many students are doing business, how many IT, etc. So we would simply look at how many of the ones we actually have. So the first one goes there, the second one there, the third one there, and the fourth one there. And I've done the same similar for the other programs. The number of scores of one are four. So we have four scores of one. So we have four students doing business. This is known as the absolute frequency. Absolute frequency can therefore be defined as the number of occurrences of a particular phenomenon. It shows how many scores have that particular value. Another type of frequency that we can employ already at a nominal variable is known as relative frequency. It's defined as the absolute frequency expressed as a fraction of the total frequency. So for example, Back to our educational program, we saw, for example, that we had four students who are doing business and we have a total of 10, which gives us four divided by 10, a relative frequency of 0.4. So in general, you can say that the relative frequency is the frequency divided by the total. Note that you can also go the other way around. So if we want to know the frequency, and we are given the relative frequencies, we can simply multiply the relative frequency by the total. So for example, 0 0.2 times 10 would give me, again, the two up here. Relative frequencies are often converted to percentages. Percent consists actually out of two words, per, which is by and cent, which is a hundred. So by a hundred. The formal definition would be a way of expressing ratios in terms of a whole numbers. A ratio or fraction is converted to a percentage by multiplying by 100 and appending a percentage sign. So how does this work? Well, we take simply the relative frequency, which we calculated on the previous slide, and multiply it by a hundred. So for example, the first one, the 0 0.4, and we multiply that by 100, and we add the percentage sign, which is actually exactly what's done here. Of course, we can also convert backwards again. We can go from percent to relative frequency by simply dividing by 100. So if I would take the 20% and I would divide it by 100, I will end up again at the 0 0.2 which is over there. Percentages, in essence, answer the question, if we would have had 100 respondents instead of, the, in this example, 10, how many would fall into each value? So in this case, if there would have been 100 people instead of 10, most likely 40 would fall in business, 30 in IT, 20 in mathematics, and 10 in psychology. Sometimes not everybody answers the survey question and you have then so-called missing values. 
This creates a small issue as in to count these missing values for this particular variable or not. The difference would be then called the valid relative frequency. So here's an example. The regular relative frequency is calculated by using the grand total, including the new 10 missing values. So for example, we use in the relative frequencies the 50 all the time and divide the frequency. So 24 is this 24 divided by the total of 50 and that gives you 0 0.48. The valid relative frequencies they will actually use the grand total excluding the missing values. So it uses the 40 instead of the 50. So we get again the 24, which is up here, but now we divide by 40. Usually the valid relative frequencies are the ones that are being reported, and they're simply often reported as relative frequency. We could therefore define valid as using as a total the number of cases excluding any missing values for that variable. As a last issue with nominal variables and the different types of frequencies that we can employ, how about if we go in reverse? So let's say we are given percentages. Then there are two ways to convert these back to frequencies. The first method uses as the 100%. And knowing that that's equal to 200 people, then we can say 100% is equal to 200. Now, if we divide both sides by 100, then, so divided by 100, then 100% 100 becomes 1% and 200 becomes 2. Knowing that 1% is equal to 2 people, we can then calculate any percentage that we want. For example, that 45, because 45 is simply 1 times 45. And if we do then the same on the right hand side, we get 2 times 45, which will actually equal 90, which was indeed the number of uh, people. So here are the other calculations as well using method 1. Another way of doing this we've actually already seen, method two. In this case, we take 45% and convert this back to the relative frequency of 0 0.45. We then simply multiply the 0 0.45 by the grand total number of people, which was 200, and again, we get 90. So again, we use the total and all the calculations are now shown. Notice that of course both methods will result in the same answer. 